just the fact that a submarine can remain submerged in the treacherous depths of the ocean for approximately three months without resurfacing, is truly remarkable. However, have you ever wondered about the hidden challenges that submarines face during their extended missions beneath the ocean's surface? What if this underwater fortress runs out of supplies, and there is nothing left to feed the crew inside? In this episode, we delve into the intriguing scenario of what happens when a submarine finds itself without crucial provisions in the middle of the ocean. Stay tuned to uncover the untold story of survival against the odds in the uncharted waters of submarine life. Prior to embarking on a long-duration mission in the depths, a comprehensive set of preparations is undertaken to ensure the crew's safety, well-being, and operational readiness. A long list of tasks need to be checked before the engine is initiated. One of the most important things where miscalculations are unacceptable is the provisioning and supply management of the submarine. Submarines are meticulously stocked with an ample quantity of supplies and provisions including food, water, fuel, and other consumables. The quantities are carefully calculated based on the mission's duration and the number of crew members on board. On average, submarines spend around 90 days in open waters before returning to their port. Each and every detail is meticulously planned, as running out of supplies with the port being far from the submarine's current location can lead to tragic consequences. As you saw from the title of this video, we will explore the consequences that arise when a submarine depletes its supplies due to an extended mission or miscalculations during the provisioning process at the port. A submarine running out of supplies is an occurrence that should not happen, and actual cases of it happening are very rare. If such a situation does arise, the submarine may need to make an unscheduled port visit if feasible. This allows the submarine to dock at a naval base or harbor where it can receive the necessary provisions, undergo maintenance, and restock supplies. However, getting back to the port is not always acceptable and can result in mission failure. While it's all fun and games when a submarine is near land and can be easily resupplied, the situation becomes more challenging when it is in the middle of the ocean, far from the nearest land and unable to quickly obtain a resupply. These situations are extremely rare and specific emergency protocols come into play. One such protocol is rationing. If the crew becomes aware that their food supply is running out, they may initiate rationing protocols. This involves distributing the remaining food in controlled portions to stretch the available resources for as long as possible. Rations would likely be minimal, and the crew would need to carefully manage their intake. These were the two extremely rare situations in which there is insufficient supply for the crew and a quick resupply is not possible. However, in cases where a submarine runs out of supplies, Various methods of resupplying can be employed. When a submarine is unable to surface or lacks access to a resupply vessel, air delivery can be utilized. Aircraft such as helicopters or fixed-wing planes can transport critical supplies to the submarine. These supplies are typically air-dropped or lowered using specialized equipment such as cargo nets or containers. Sometimes the airway is not the best possible method to resupply a submarine, the waterway is. A submarine tender or support ship can be dispatched to rendezvous with the submarine at a predetermined location. These vessels are specifically designed to provide maintenance, support, and resupply services to submarines. They possess the capability to directly transfer supplies, including food, fuel, and other essential items either through docking or by using transfer lines and equipment. But sometimes due to harsh weather, neither helicopters or support ships cannot reach the helpless submarine, and underwater submarine transfer is required. In certain scenarios, if multiple submarines are in close proximity, 
supplies can be transferred between them. If one submarine has surplus provisions, it can transfer them to the submarine in need. This can be accomplished when both submarines surface or are at periscope depth, facilitating a controlled transfer of supplies. That's it for this episode. Hope you liked it and please consider subscribing. Your thoughts on this topic are more than welcomed in the comment section.